In this video, I'm going to take a look at a specific scenario that often occurs with branches in software development. And that is we might be working on a single feature branch, but then we might find that there's something that happened in another branch that we need in our feature branch. And so we have to essentially merge across branches. I'm going to demonstrate this with a unit test on a feature branch and then a change in the main or master branch that I'm going to pull into that feature branch. Let's start with our IDE and I'm going to create a new branch. We'll call it plant DTO unit test. And once again, we're not so concerned about the code that I'm writing. As a matter of fact, it's Kotlin. If you're not familiar with Kotlin, don't worry too much. We just want to demonstrate the concept of being able to pull from one branch to another. So I make a new test. And we're simply saying confirm that Eastern Redbud outputs Eastern Redbud. So we're testing a new DTO. And this DTO is going to be called plant. So we'll say var plant colon plant equals plant. Now let's take a look at what I put here. I'm creating a variable. And actually that could be a val because we're not changing it. We'll change it to val. Creating a variable called plant of type plant. And I'm assigning to it a new object of type plant. And in this object, I'm passing a genus of Circus, a species of Canadensis, and a common name of Eastern Redbud. And I want to assert that when I invoke toString on this new plant type, it's going to return to me Eastern Redbud. All looks good, and this is a fairly good unit test for a DTO. But the problem is, I don't have that DTO. And so you notice that unresolved reference plant, there's no way that I can import this plant DTO or data class because I've simply not created it yet. And so this will not compile until I've created that plant class. Let me go ahead and save this and do an intermediate commit. Now this feels a little bit dirty. We should only really commit code that compiles, but we also know we're essentially doing a test-driven design here. We're writing a test around the data class before we create the data class. So I'm going to go ahead and give us a pass on this. So create test driven design for plant data class. And we'll just do a commit at this point. No need to push. And you notice it tells me there are two errors because it won't compile. Okay, now let's say that this plant data class is something that we need to use not just in this plant DTO unit test branch, but we need to use it in other branches as well, which is a common scenario because a data class is meant to be shared across layers. So we might be working on unit tests while someone else is working on the DAO or someone else is working on the UI, and we all need this common currency of a plant object to communicate with each other. So what I'm going to do is go back to master, and let's go ahead and say check out master, and let's create the data class there. Navigate to my project, and typically data classes we would put in a specific sub-package. So first thing I'm going to do is make a new package called app.plantdiary.dto, just like so. And then right-click new, Kotlin class or file. We'll call it a class, and we'll call it plant. Uh, once again, don't worry too much about Kotlin syntax if you haven't seen it before. Just be aware that what we're trying to do is merge a change from one branch to another. Now, a nice thing about Kotlin is it's very easy to create a data class or a DTO with minimum lines. We simply say data class, and then we give it a constructor signature with everything we want in that constructor. Keep in mind, we start with a genus, and that genus is a string. So we put var genus to indicate that we're declaring a variable called genus, colon, and then string to indicate that the data type is string. Then do the same thing with species. So variable or a parameter called species of type string, and finally common. Open curly, close curly, and in Kotlin that essentially is a DTO or a data class. We don't have to make all the getters and setters, those are implied. Now it also gives us a to string function, but we can override that if we wish, and we'll do that now. You see, it once again it helps us out. As soon as I start typing override, it says, okay, here are the functions that are normal to override at this point. Equals, hash code, and to string. So override to string, instead of returning super dot to string, I'm simply going to return common. And there we go, there's our data class. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say git commit, create test driven design for plant data class. We'll go ahead and say, uh, or let's say create plant data class. 
and commit. Let's go back to our plant DTO unit test branch. Check this out again. And let's just confirm if we look at project, you notice we do not have that DTO package and we do not have that plant data class within the DTO package. So at this point, we need to merge from master into plant DTO unit test. So I click once again on the branches. I'm going to right click on master or actually left click on master and say merge into current, which means take those changes from master, put them into my current branch. Aha, look at that. So when I do merge into current, I have DTO and I have plant. And notice I'm going to get a new option here I didn't have before. Alt enter and import. And sure enough, now my unit test compiles because I've imported in or merged in this dependency, which I created from a different branch. As a matter of fact, I can go ahead and play the unit test. And we see that the test passed. So I'm still on my plant DTO unit test branch. Let's go ahead and do a get and a push. And we're pushing from plant DTO unit test to plant DTO unit test. I choose push. Let's look at GitHub. Plant DTO unit test had recent pushes less than a minute ago. Let's go ahead and do a compare and pull request. And we're pulling from plant DTO unit test to master. Create pull request. It's able to merge, so we choose merge. Confirm merge. And now let's go back to my plant diary 32 and see what we have. On the master branch, we have nine different commits. We have our create test driven design for plant data class, which we created in our unit test branch. Then create plant data class, which we created in master. Now we merged master into plant DTO unit test, and then we merged uh, plant DTO unit test back into master. So you see, we've kind of done ping pong a little bit, but nonetheless, the two branches are up to date and they're in master. Now we know a good idea is to go back to Android Studio and make sure that our master is up to date with GitHub. So I'm going to go ahead and check out master, go to project, and then get and pull. Pull from origin master, and we'll confirm that our plant DTO is here. We can also take a look at our example unit test. One thing I realized I did when I did the import on this plant, I didn't do a commit in my unit test branch, but that's a super easy fix. I can simply go in here and make that update so that the unit test now passes. But that, that was just a, a, essentially a clerical error on my part. Nonetheless, if I want, just for my own sanity, I can go ahead and do a commit and push. And now I feel good because we have no errors. So I push up to master and we know that our master is in, in a good shape. It contains not only the changes that we created locally in master, which is this plant DTO, but also the unit test that we created in a different branch. It also helps me to validate that after all of this merging between branches, I can still push a commit without a merge conflict. So everything looks good. This has been a look at an advanced branching concept, which is how to pick a change from one branch to another and do a merge. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.